everybody. Today we're talking about ponds and plants that uh, grow in ponds and we're going to concentrate on a water lily. It's called a Rocky Mountain Pond Lily, um, but it's also all over the world actually. It's found in China and Africa as well, uh, in Europe as well as um, North America. So let's go ahead and write our, <clears throat> write our title, Ponds, Plants, and we are going to um, look at this beautiful yellow pond lily, the Rocky Mountain Pond Lily. In other places, it's called other, other names, um, like cow lily, so anyway, it is in Colorado. So here it will be the Rocky Mountain Pond Lily. Again, write your date whenever you are doing this nature journal project. Um, it would be fun to see if you can find one of these. Maybe again, like we've mentioned, the pond at Rock Ledge Park. Um, so we could um, if you are able to go out there and find the actual pond lilies, then that would be great to draw from real life. So um, I've posted a botanical illustration of a pond lily and the different parts of it. They can be um, um, pretty, um, the, the flowers can be about, um, five to 12 centimeters, so we'll, we'll draw ours pretty big. I'm gonna just start out with a, a big pond, the flower, looking at it from up above. So it's pretty round, and it has different parts to it. It has a center part, which is where the seeds are created. Now remember, this is looking straight down on it, and it's called the pistil. Not like a pistil like a gun, but a pistil that um, takes, takes um, pollen from stamens. And these have pollen on them, and they surround the pistil, and then they go down into the tube there, and the pollen connects with the what's called the ovules and creates seeds in there. So the um, pistil kind of has an actual flower type shape around the going radiating out of the um, center. So if you look at it from the side, the pistil would look like this. And it would have um, seeds inside of it. So you could even call it a fruit because fruit holds seeds. Okay. So we'll draw this design, this beautiful design that it's called radiating out. It has, I think we've talked about symmetry before. It has radiating symmetry. <clears throat> so, um, and then here's the, um, the stamens that hold the pollen that go down into the tube to create seeds. <clears throat> okay, so... The stamens will be um, be around this pistil. So this this flower has a lot of different parts to it, and it will take a little bit of time to draw the different parts. But it's just kind of fun and relaxing if you just kind of um, enjoy the process. They're um, really beautiful, vibrant flowers. <clears throat> okay, 
So we have that part. We have the, we can label this the, the pistol. And then these are the stamens that have the pollen. So these have the seeds. This is what this looks like. If you um, turned it to the side and cut it in half, you would see seeds down there. And then, um, and then the, this has the pollen. Okay, then there's another layer that goes around the, um, the stamens that are little petals. And they are kind of just like curves and they might overlap. So we've talked about um, form and we've talked about space. So when we overlap something, it helps to show that there's space, that it's just not flat. So I'll do some that are um, overlapping. <clears throat> so the petals will look kind of like this if you just took one petal out. And again, I'll have the picture posted for you to look at. So, and this is us looking right straight down on top of this Rocky Mountain Pond Lily. Okay, then the part that is very showy and bright and yellow is, some people would think that these are the petals and it's, it could be confusing, but there are um, six of these and they are actually called the, um, the sepals. So they are kind of a, um, a uh, they enclose the petals. They, um, normally on plants, the sepals would probably be green, but these are a bright, beautiful yellow. Whoops. So I just kind of drew these circles. First I started with the circle for the, um, the pistol. Then you could kind of draw in a little circle to help you draw where the stigmas are, the pollen-bearing structures. You could draw another circle that shows how far out the, um, the, lead, the petals go. And then you could draw a bigger circle to show where these um, sepals go out to. So there's one, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, <laughs> six, and some of them might be overlapping. So, but there's um, six sepals and they are the bright yellow color that we could mistake for petals. Okay, so that is our basic um, pond lily looking up above our Rocky Mountain Pine Lily. So this is the pistil here. The top of the pistil is called the stigma. And I, th I remember that word because it's like the pollen from the, um, the stamens stick to the stigma, so sticky stigma. Um, okay, I forgot to write down our um, Latin name of the Rocky Mountain pond lily, Nufar lutea. And again, these are native all around the world. So, um, We'll go ahead and paint those in a little bit. We could have like a little bit here, just kind of showing that they overlap and kind of have um, some, um, they aren't just flat. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and draw um, what this 
pond, so this is kind of, this is life size. It could be a little smaller, a little bit bigger than this. But I'd like to show you, give you an idea of what they look like as far as their size goes in real life. So we can draw um, a line going from one side to the other. And um, we can, let me look at what I had here as far as the measurements. Um, okay, they can be like seven to 12 centimeters across. Okay, so when you, like we've done before, you can draw from one, e a line from where one edge ends to the other edge, and then, and then this tells the length of it, and also the width, because it's round. Now we'll draw um, what this plant would look like in the water. So I'm drawing a stem with um, the pond lily, not life size like here, but just kind of a, a diagram of how it would look in the water. So this will be the flower as a whole. And these again are the, um, the sepals. What we see first, this outside, these outside structures would be what these are here. And then here's the, um, the pistol sticking up. This thing right here is right down there. The pistol. Um, okay, and then, so it might stick up above the water. And then it has heart-shaped um, leaves that generally float. Some might be below the water so that you could draw hearts. And then they are connected to um, down below the water. I'll draw another one. And this stem, you, might, you won't see the whole stem because it would be hidden by part of the leaf. The leaves might be a little wavy too. And they, um, connect down here to something called a rhizome, which is a thick, spongy um, structure. So this is called, here's the rhizome. Um, and it has roots coming off of it. And it's under, under water. Now we could draw some water here, line of where the water is, and that these leaves are floating above. There could be some leaves that are growing up and headed toward the surface. <clears throat> but they connect to this rhizome, which has roots draw maybe one more leaf that is will eventually probably get to the top okay so um, the leaves up at, at the top connect to these um, these stems if we looked at one of these stems and looked at it larger, and this is, would be like one that is still connected, it has holes in it that allow air to go down, down the stem to the roots. So it passes from the leaves, which are getting oxygen, down to the roots. This would be like a, a bigger, um, times maybe 10, maybe, maybe five. 
is what it actually looks like. Um, okay. Um, I'll just kind of draw around here just to show you um, how, if you looked at this from the side, there would be the stigmas. I mean, there's a stigma on the pistil and then this, the um, stamens. stamens around the pistol and then there would be the petals so if we're looking at this thing turn to the side and cut in half and then there would be these big sepals around the flower So we can use our brush and um, try to get a clean yellow, which is the most challenging. And we can just use the pencil lines that we made to help define the, the pistil and the um, stamens and the petals and the, um, the sepals. Like I said, often the sepals aren't nearly as large on plants and they're often um, green instead of this really brilliant yellow. So, I'm trying to clean up my yellow. I'm gonna go ahead, I have another set of watercolor paints that I'm gonna go ahead and use these. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna get the, the color on my palette is very similar to the color that we have in photos. And I'm just gonna paint this bright yellow for the, um, the um, color of the, of the pond lily, Rocky Mountain pond lily. I'm just gonna kind of separate what I'm doing a little bit. So I'm just painting the sepals right now. And I can go on the inside, paint the pistol. And then the stamens. So if you can like even say to yourself the names of the different parts, it helps you remember what they are. Maybe I can paint a little bit of um, orange around. Some of them are a little bit of green, just to kind of separate them a little bit. But maybe I'll wait because it's still wet. And you know, if watercolor is wet, it'll bleed from one section to another. So then I'm painting the petals. And the petals are fun. Um, you might not even see the petals. This, the um, sepals might be so closed around it that you're not even aware that there's petals here. But these are the actual petals of the flower. <clears throat> Usually petals are more the bigger part, but in this case, the sepals are the bigger part of the flower. Next week we're gonna talk about wildflowers so we can talk again about different parts of the flower and see the differences. And then this part's probably um, a basic yellow too. I'll let that dry a little bit and go on to, here's our, um, go on to this diagram of the, the flower in the pond. So I just wanted to show you the, the beauty of the, um, the whole big flower Here's the petal, stigmas, and then this is the, the pistil with the seeds inside of it. This is like you return this on its side and cut it in half to see what it looks like. I'll go down to my flower that is um, just like a diagram showing it 
it's smaller, not life size. Paint that yellow. Then I'll mix up a green. I have some orange in my palette. I'm going to mix in a little bit of um, orange in there. And maybe some dark green. Because these leaves can be kind of darker. And then I'm just going to paint in um, the leaves, the heart-shaped leaves. I can leave a little bit of white there. Um, just to show uh, some veins and then I could go back and put in some yellow green if I want to get more detailed after that dries. As usual you could use colored pencils on this um, if you want or you could use a mixture. I'm going to use the very tip of my brush and Paint the stems I just use the tip very gently I can get it to be pretty fine painting leaves underwater that are smaller and are growing this is a, just like a cross section showing that there's air holes in the stems these are bigger than this just to show these air holes that take oxygen from the leaves down to the stems, down to the roots. Okay, and then I can paint um, this part called the rhizomes, which has the roots on it. And this is what's underneath. Um, down below the surface that supports the um, the plant. Something that I found interesting about these plants is that Native Americans would use them, they would grind the seeds in here for flour, and then they would also sometimes use them, at, roast them and make popcorn. Um, as I said, this uh, same or similar water lily is found in China, and the Chinese um, would use this to uh, the plant to um, help people have more energy. Would help people, older people especially who um, had achy, achy joints, um, to feel better, and um, it could. They used it to control bleeding. Now here on this rhizome, I painted just some, some basic brown and I'm just dropping in some brown for some extra texture. It's kind of fun to just to let it, let it bleed in there. All right, so there's our uh, Rocky Mountain Pond Lily. Um, be great as usual, as I say most of the time, that to, to be able to see it in person so now that you're aware of it more, um, be on the lookout because they are found in Colorado. Um, and just remember that this plant, like many, has, has many uses and, um, and has been used by the native people. And um, not only is it useful, it's beautiful too. It's, it also... Um, serves as a good habitat for um, fish. It, it helps protect them and um, adds oxygen to the water. So um, whole ponds can be covered with, with these. Okay, so have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.